All right, all right, all right. Back at you with another art video. It's Art with Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. I want to go over a really exciting topic that used to keep me busy for hours, especially when I was young. Uh, and then later on, when I was a teacher, I would love sharing this lesson because I found that, you know, there are a lot of people with um, interest in art and design um, have an interest in drawing the things around them. And in American culture, anyway, cars are a big part of um, this culture. And what's so frustrating for me, if you kind of read that comment, is after being stuck inside for so long, I even more I realize how much I depend on like moving around, being adventurous, and just seeing new things. You know, whether you're an artist or you're just, you know, a normal person that just enjoys being out and about, it's time that we kind of take stock of all these things we took for granted before, what I'm certainly looking forward to experiencing again once this containment's over. But again, thank you for joining. I see we have a couple people watching. Jim, thanks for tuning in. Kate, great to have you. I know we have a few more, um, and I want to get started right away. Uh, but again, just always want to thank you guys for tuning in. This has been a lot of fun for me. It gives me an excuse to share uh, some of the stuff that I probably, you know, in my professional uh, art projects, I don't get to share as much. But this is going to be a fun one. So a few tips before we get started. Our materials... You know, believe it or not, a lot of people who sketch things more of like design for like products and cars, a lot of them tend to use pens. Um, one of the reasons for that is the ball at the tip is really smooth and doesn't give you as much resistance. You can get these really sharp, clean lines and with a Bic pencil or a Bic pen, even just like these junky ones you probably have around the house, you can even and like draw light lines with them. There's a really... Um, neat amount of shading you can do the only thing i want to just point out is if you're using something like this after a while if you draw on the side a lot or you're just really cranking out lines with this stuff you'll get this crusty ink that has a tendency to like stick to your hand and then you'll smear your paper so just keep an eye out for that maybe keep like a towel on the side just to wipe off the tip of the pen every once in a while so you don't get frustrated if you're trying to do really precise work but otherwise i'm using a pencil I try to keep it as sharp as possible when I'm doing stuff like this, um, but ultimately any drawing material, even markers and stuff, will help you a lot. But for the first part, I'm going to be doing, um, you know, a lot of stuff with just basic lines. Antonia just hopped on. Um, so great to see you guys, whoever's watching on Antonia's channel. I really appreciate you guys tuning in, and I'm going to get started. Okay, now before I draw any real lines with this two things I want to say. Number one, cut yourself some slack. This is meant to be a creative exercise. And the beauty is I'm going to show you how to imagine a car first before we try to compare it to any other, you know, car that exists. The beauty of creating your own concept car is a car that you get to dream up. So I'm going to teach you some strategies to build that from the ground up. And then the last thing I want to teach you is the technique that you can use, whether you're drawing a car or you're drawing a cartoon or a portrait. The key thing is you're drawing fundamentals, how to use your materials so they give you the best results. And the main skill I'm going to talk, you, talk to you today is I want you to take your pencil and first grip it like you're saying, I'm number one right here, okay? And I want you to take your pen or pencil, stick it right here, okay? That's one way that we can start to shade. It doesn't work so much with a pen, but with a pencil, I want you to know, I'm just going to make some nice wide strokes like this. You see how my hand muscles aren't moving like this. It's my elbow. So if you can look at my camera, okay, I'm moving directly from my elbow. Most of your movement for drawing, especially these clean, smooth curves, is going to come from your elbow and not your wrist. Okay? So if I turn this, even this line right here, I could turn this into a car. Right? You can hold your pencil like this. You can hold it a little bit farther back, which will keep you away from using these tiny muscles in your hands and getting like really rigid lines. So back up a little bit, relax and use your elbow to sketch it out. See if you can kind of like cross over some lines like this, making these sweeping S curves and just kind of look, they're not even like looking like a car right now, but I'm just sweeping them around. Okay. Kind of keeping them over here. I'm going to try to draw a straight line over here, a straight line here. Again, just practicing those sweeping lines. Loosen up that arm. I'm just making these nice, almost like wave-like shapes. Okay, this is a good warm-up. 
just to loosen up. Don't get too into your perfection mode here. I want you to think of your arm being like simulating the movements of the wind. They're always smooth. They can be strong. They can be, you know, weak. They can be flowing, but they're very rarely straight and jagged. Okay, so get that nice loose line over here. And let's warm up down here. I'm just going to put a bunch of circles. So I'm using, look, my pan muscles aren't moving. I'm moving from my shoulder now. Look at my camera view. Watch my shoulder, my elbow. I'm drawing a circle, just lightly drawing this in. Anywhere over here. And I'm just going to draw another one. You're probably wondering what kind of car this is. But this is... If you've ever read one of those choose your own adventure books, this is what I love about just kind of scribbling on a piece of paper. You make it less precious, all right? Sometimes a fresh piece of paper is really intimidating. But when I say choose your own adventure, we just put a bunch of these smooth flowing lines, these nice round sketchy circles, okay? What we're going to do is now look at some of the lines we have drawn on here, and we're just going to try to imagine a car and put one together using these lines we just put in. And I guarantee you it's probably going to be a little bit more smooth and realistic than you might have expected. So what I'm going to do is pick, um, I'm just going to draw a straight line. Think of this as my front wheel. I'm going to draw a light line here. This will be the front of my car. Okay, and then I'm going to do one in the back. So I'm going to cut it off just about right here. Okay. Now, I also have noticed if you look at a car, okay, these circles will be the wheels. The car usually goes a little bit lower, especially a race car. So in, if we look at where the ground would be, I drew a straight line. Okay, we, There's a lot of space in between. And what's really cool about race cars is they get really low to the ground. So I'm going to draw a line just all the way through. We can always erase this stuff. Even if you're doing it with a pen, it's really not about like at this stage drawing anything too precious, all right? So this is gonna be the ground. This is gonna be kind of the baseline for the car. And this space would be the amount of clearance over you know, the road, right? Now I have this line. This is kind of the length of my car. It goes all the way down to here. And then I wanna, I usually start with uh, actually the windshield, okay? So I drew this line. I'm just gonna pick a segment like right here. I'm gonna darken that up. Okay, and then I'm going to see where it intersects with another line here. I don't know. There's one that goes back, a little back, a little bit farther, but I'm going to do the back part right here. All right, and I see this other line that swooped in. I'm going to darken that in. It almost looks like that wheel well, something that goes around the back. I'm not finishing the whole line, but then over here... Uh, this could be part of the hood of the car. It could follow all the way down. But I see there's another line like right here. Draw right there. Kind of ends at the wheel. And then I'm going to add a unique shape here. So you start to see this could be a really aggressive sports car. But I'm going to darken up the bottom line here so we see a sense of the bottom. But at the front, I'm going to do like kind of a scooped parentheses shape right here. And at the back, maybe similar, okay? So from the end point, I'm just trimming off the bottom here. I'm starting to see kind of a shape that reminds me of a car, all right? Now, again, we don't know what model of car this is. You know, it could change into a lot of different things, but this would be good for like a sports car, those nice, smooth, flowing lines. But remember, we turn this in from basically our scribbles, okay? So this is a low-pressure exercise. Another thing is I've used computer paper for this. I, I like to draw quickly, change some things up. So use some kind of just cheap, easy paper to use. And then when you finally, you'd be better off like starting off on a new sheet or on the back of one if you ever do, okay? Now let's try to turn this more into a car. I, I'm getting the shape, but I wanna add some more roundness here. So I'm gonna just kind of round this over here and I'm connecting points with smooth curves. I'm going down to this corner here. Um, let's see. I'm going to add a little bit more of like my windshield. And just have a flatter top up here. It kind of has a cool angle. And then a lot of times you'll see kind of these posts that will separate. Like this would be like where the window would be. 
Okay, so this is kind of a really aggressive stance here. And if there was a door, it would continue from around that post. So here's the post. This might be a window over here. But then I'm going to put a line in between. It's going to kind of sweep down. This is where the door would be. Now, there's also usually some cool line work around here. I like to put a parentheses down like this sometimes. It's almost like a scoop or something. And just like put a line in between. Kind of an aerodynamic line. And then I'm going to just like imagine if this line swooped up. Maybe it kind of comes back up in the corner. So it trims off the back of that car so it's not as harsh. So sometimes like pointy areas don't make too much sense in a car. We want the air to flow smoothly over it like a wing or something like that. All right, so I'm going to add some more details in here. But before I turn these into tires, I'm going to just firm up this shape. This is like the part that goes around the tire or the fender. Okay, and that's like the cutaway. And the wheels are going to be slightly smaller, so just keep that in mind. We'll draw the details later. Uh, all right, we should draw the front part of the door. That's usually going to be somewhere over here. And there might be more of a post right in here. Okay. So that means like this would be part of the windshield. So see how my, the line that I drew before. This is when I start using my eraser as a drawing tool, deciding where each one of those lines go. If I lighten that up, create this kind of cool shape. You know, this side goes all the way up. There's my windshield, but I got this really cool, unique thing that, you know, I don't see on many cars, but since it's my car, I'm going to leave it there, this kind of like forward arching thing. All right, let me just back up and say we're getting a pretty cool car shape out of just these warm-up lines, okay? So if you just think of like this really smooth flowing shapes and movements with your arm, you're going to get better results even if you're not even trying. So that's the key. It's like golf. The harder you try sometimes, the worse you do. Drawing is kind of similar, especially when you're coming up with new ideas. Let the lines tell you where to create. It's really interesting, especially when you have some of these um, flowing lines. All right. Now on the back, see we have this line that goes all the way out. This is going to be something unique. I'm going to just draw this over here, darken that up. I'm picturing one of those like really uh, fast like Formula One cars from like the 60s or 70s. And I'll be drawing a few of those later. But there's this really cool scoop in the back. Maybe that's the uh, back windshield. And this would probably be like where the engine would be if it's a rear engine car. But you notice how all of these lines have like this mystery where they all kind of connect to something. And if you're watching the episode the other day, we talked about implied lines with that E optical illusion. That's what we're doing. The eye loves to fill in the blanks of lines. They like to connect it in the background. All right. So I'm going to start cleaning up here, you know, especially because I drew some of those lines lighter. I'm just going to maybe clean some things up and decide which things are going to happen first. So here's this fender. All right. And I'm noticing that this is really aggressive. It's kind of neat. And this is where you can have some fun using uh, some more details. Another thing that I like about this exercise is a lot of people think of creativity as this really big challenge. Okay, so they're always like, oh, well, I have to know exactly how this is going to look in my mind in order to create something. This is the opposite. It's basically like a scientist. They don't know the answer to their uh, experiment at the end. They set up a test. They put some lines in place, see if they work, see if they like that. And then they move forward with their best guess. If they don't like it, they make a change. And that's what we're doing here. That's kind of the difference between designing something and just totally coming up with it in your mind here. Okay? All right. Now, some other features that you might have on a car, right, would be uh, headlights. And sometimes from the side, you can just kind of create some shapes like this. This looks a little sharp for the front of a car, so I'm going to round that out a little bit. Okay, and then maybe put like, 
another set for the turn signals down here. In the back, let's have them kind of wrap around, have a nice cool shape that follows some of those things. And I like to give like slanting lines, maybe break that up into kind of a cool shape that almost echoes the back curve here. Now let's add another one, maybe it's a little bit smaller. That's kind of like the turn signals in the back. Okay, and then, I don't know, you might be able to have some fun. Should we put a spoiler on there? That would be something like this, kind of a wing shape. And then, all right, let's loosen up some of these lines that I drew inside here. And you're going to see this thing really pop out. So the beauty of drawing with the pencil is you can do this erasing stuff. But even if you're drawing with a pen, you're still going to get a pretty cool result if you darken up some of those lines. All right. Literally, this car did not exist. Let's see. 20 minutes ago when I started talking, probably a little bit less than that. Now we have a completely brand new car. We didn't look at a single picture of a car. We literally just scribbled using a new drawing technique. So I want you guys to get that confidence. Know that literally infinite amounts of designs are at your fingertips and you just want to dive in, create them, and uh, really change it up. Now there are a couple other tips I have for you if you have something specific in mind that you really want to figure out how that's going to draw and we'll move on to that in just a second because I left these things without any rims or any of the interior design we'll come back to that at a later time so I'm going to switch to a new sheet of paper and if you don't want to do something that's much like a, spo a sporty like race car like that there's another technique that's a little bit more step by step and precise and that's what I'm going to use um, a ruler for okay I'm starting with the side view of cars because it's generally the easiest to get started with and we'll talk about how you can use the side view of a car to actually figure out what the front view might look like. So what I'm going to do here is start off with a few horizontal lines. Now the first one, this is going to be the baseline of the car. So like this line right here, it doesn't touch the ground. Okay, I'm not going to figure out how far the clearance is. Like, well, let's do like an SUV for this one. I'm going to start to draw another horizontal line here. And about the same distance away, I'm just going to add another ver uh, horizontal line. So these are all parallel with each other. Okay. And if we were to do something like an SUV, it's a little bit more boxy, right? But it doesn't mean we can't use the same techniques. The problem with really boxy cars is like the wind gets in the way and you'll see even if you look closely at you know a pickup truck or an SUV there are a lot of really smooth out angles in there even if it's still a boxy shape. So let's go at this one and before I draw any of the lines I'm going to say all right this is going to be the front this is going to be the back but instead of going at it here this is the height the maximum height of the car. Okay, that's as tall as it's going to get. Before I even add wheels, I want to just start adding some of those light lines, just experimenting with angles. Okay, somewhere around here. This is going to be the hood of the car. This is like basically the bottom portion of the car here. I'm lightly sketching in. And this, since it's like an SUV, I'm going to add from this corner up towards the top. It's a little bit steeper angle, but maybe I make a whole arch like this that goes above. All right, maybe I'll draw a line from this corner and we'll see how that looks. Maybe go to the front. I'm going above and out. I'm creating some of those same types of lines, deciding where they might go. I'm even going to do one from down here. I'm going to arch it back up to here. And I don't know. I'm gonna maybe make another line that kind of does like a wave here. All right. So we just put in a few lines here. But what's useful about the box that I drew is it kind of contains the design for the bottom portion. OK, 
Okay, and then the top height is already set up. So what I'm looking for when I, I just darken this line up, I'm going to look for places where those lines intersect. So right there, right there, somewhere over here, right? That's going to be where the windshield is. I'm going to start off on the windshield. I'm going to say, I'm going to follow this line. See how that line came from down here? I'm just going to darken in this front portion. For the back portion, I'll pick this intersection here. I'm going to draw it down. You know, that's my back edge of the car. And I might even just soften up the top a little bit, add a little bit more round shape, because that air doesn't like hard corners. But you start to see we have this kind of SUV shape. All right. Now, before we add the wheels in, let's kind of uh, think about some other features of a car you might see, especially on something like an SUV, sports utility vehicle. If it's utility, that means it has a job to do, right? So even though some of those SUVs, to be fair, are just luxury cars. Let's just think of this like if you had to go across the desert. Uh, you want something with it's a little bit higher off the ground so you can get over all terrain. But you want some things that will help you. Maybe you got to tow somebody, so you're going to add somewhat of a bumper. That might stick off the back right here. And there might be a bumper up here. Okay. So let's decide how far off the ground is this thing going to be. Let's pull a line across, and we can, I'll do it lightly first, just to double check. Okay, that seems pretty close, uh, but maybe a little bit lower. Okay. All right, now I would imagine that the tires would go to about here. They're relatively larger tires, and I'm going to draw a vertical line where I think the axle would be. Like, where is that? wheel gonna be given enough room let's try right about there and we're gonna try to put a circle remove my ruler here and again let's loosen up that elbow your shoulder you can even move your body into it we're lightly sketching a circle in. don't worry if it goes over the lines we're feeling out where this thing goes there we go let's put another one here trying to get it so the top and the bottom hit both areas. I feel like that gives us enough room, but it does look like this car is maybe pushed a little far back or it starts a little bit too, I don't know, there's something a little bit off about it, but again, we're just trying this thing out. So hopefully if you guys are drawing along, I, I would really love to see if you try these techniques, how they turn out. So please, it's been really fun. If you check out, uh, I did post some of the students' work uh, yesterday on my Instagram stories. So check that out today. And if you haven't uh, followed me, it's Art with Anderson. Just keep an eye out. It's underscores in between. You can find that right below my feed right there. Anyway, so here we go. We got the circles in there. And since we're not doing those, you know, especially wavy lines, I do have some lines left over here that we can experiment with. I'm just going to try to just darken up this line right here. And instead of See how from the hood I had this line that kind of curved over? Instead of keeping a corner there, I'm going to just put another curve that smooths that out. So think of this as like surfing. You're creating these waves, and like if you were on a surfboard, you'd have to kind of smooth out those curves. We're technically creating like a tangent uh, to kind of blend those things together. But to help this thing along, let's put... A line here and make kind of a post for the division between like that front windshield and then the side window okay still looks a little bit weird I'm gonna you know we might have to like make this thing a little bit longer or even this out we'll get to that in a minute if it's a four door right there'd probably be something like a post right here and that would be the boundary of that first door, if you think about it like that. All right, so that means that we might have to push this thing out. So again, making those adjustments as you go. I'm just going to use my mind to kind of copy and paste that shape a little bit farther back. I'm going to extend this. I'll extend my baseline. And 
I'm going to see where would that second door, usually it's slightly over the wheel well. It's going to be like right here. It also means there's going to be a back portion. Uh, I'll draw another wheel in there. And give it a little bit more space, and it'll come out to about here. Maybe that looks a little bit better for what we're doing. Again, we're imagining this car from scratch, so don't feel the pressure to have something perfect. If you were designing a real car for a company, you're going to be doing hundreds, if not thousands, of sketches with a team and all this stuff. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to get it right the first time. All right. Since this is an SUV, I'm going to put a tire on the back. But you could check the measurement and say, take my pencil, hold this here from the top of the circle to the bottom and say, oh, that circle needs to be a little bit taller if it's going to be the right size tire. All right. And we're starting to get a nice SUV. Now the SUVs, you might see a more rectangular front. Maybe there's some features pop out a little bit. Doesn't have to be rectangular, but you want to get that turn signal in there. And let's see. Let's figure out an interesting place to put the door handles. Now we have these really sweeping curves right here. Kind of go back towards here and we have this top line and since this door goes a little bit higher for the back seat let's try to figure out a cool place to put it um, I like this line right here and I'm just gonna put an oval right here and right here try to make them the same length And then let's add some details on the side. Maybe this is kind of a higher truck, so it has almost like a step ladder here. And then let's add something of a fender. So making it a little bit more boxy. I'm creating a couple more angles here. And blending it into that side part that pops out. Let's do another one. About the same height, so I can just draw a light line to say here's the height of my fenders. Get a similar angle. And we're starting to look pretty good. Now the fenders, what are they for? They're actually, if you're especially if you're on a muddy track of road or something like that, the fenders, since the wheels stick out the farthest, like wide, okay. This blocks from mud flying up and splattering all over the side of the car in most cases. Sometimes if it's really off-road, they put these rubber flaps right here. Okay, and if it's a true off-road vehicle, maybe it's got a nice like adventure rack on the top. So it's got this nice steel rack. And this thing is really set up for off-roading and it's got these floodlights on the top. I'm just drawing and imagining the ultimate adventure vehicle and maybe there's some like boxes and luggage tied to the top. So when you think about your cars, think about them as a character, right? Something that tells a story about what they're designed to do. That's exactly what you see in these advertisements that are always like, you know, you look closely at the bottom and it says like it's professional driver on a closed course. And they're usually doing these insane things like driving up the side of a mountain in the snow or they're driving through sand and rivers and all this other stuff especially for these adventure vehicles but the cool thing is is once you get into those details you can decide how to modify them so one other way you could think about this let's say you just have a hobby and you like making your car look cool you could just draw these things out see how it would look get a look and feel for it and you're all set and this car took us a little over 10 minutes. So we're, we got a whole new genre, but what did we do different this time is we kind of decided that this is gonna be a little bit more boxy, but notice we added some of those clean lines 
to make this look a little bit more sleek, a little more sporty, something that people would want to buy instead of if you look at cars from like the, I don't know, 50s, if they were made to go off road, they weren't thinking about style at all. They were just thinking about like, man, can this thing survive going over like a rocky road? All right. So we have turned this thing into a pretty unique, some sort of like, almost like a Land Rover, Range Rover thing. All right. And so that puts us, we're 34 minutes in and we have totally new two sets of cars right there. Okay. And this one in particular, where it was a little bit more precise, where we set the height and we can always change those things. All right. Now, what's interesting about these cars all right, is that we've been drawing them from the side view. And if you're trying to think like, well, that's not always the way that we see them. Another way is like, well, how would I make sure that this actually looks like this car, uh, but it is, you know, I can show it from the front view if I, I've never seen this car because it's imaginary. Well, there's another technique I want to show you here. I'm not going to get into crazy amounts of detail, but I want to show you how you could transfer those measurements and start to design from the front or the back or the top and simply using a ruler, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do is kind of side by side, I'm just gonna put this new piece of paper next to my thing, or if you have a really large piece of paper, you can do this all on one sheet, but I'm gonna create a top, or sorry, a front view of this car, but what I need to focus on is this some of these lines over here, especially this one, uh, this one, this is the height of the hood, this one, and the ground. And I'm going to transfer those over to my new sheet of paper with a ruler. So here we go. I am taking this line from the base. I'm just going to lightly do it this way, slide it up without moving that paper. Okay. And then I'm going to hunt for other details, like the top of this little track here. Draw that in. Here's the top of the bumper. Okay, here's the top of the fender. I should draw the top of the wheels too, right? Okay, here's the top of that window area. I don't know if we'll be able to see that. Here is top of the car that we had originally drawn out. Here's that little extra part that we drew, right? And then let's draw the rack. Okay, the rack itself goes about right here. And then I'm just going to put in, here's the tallest piece of luggage here. Okay, now these lines might not look like much, okay? But if I put a vertical line down the side, we're gonna create a box inside of which we're gonna draw this car and using those lines, we'll be able to figure this out. One other feature I wanna see if I can stretch out would be the height of these lights, okay? So I'm just drawing a line all the way across top and bottom of those lights. And we'll get the bottom set of turn signals here. Okay. So I'm gonna put this on the kind of right side of the screen so you guys can see it. Um, and I'll be just moving this in and out as we go because we wanna see the front. So what I'm doing is deciding here, the exact same measurements are like the bottom, here's the road, here's the top of the luggage. Okay, we've transferred those measurements and we're gonna basically have to imagine how those pieces we see from the side fit into the front. And there's some other things that we can't see from the side view that we might have to invent, okay? All right, so let's draw another vertical line over here and you have to decide how wide is this car going to be. And we'll see if this will work. But the first thing I'm most interested in is remember that first line that we drew right here where it's like the height of this bottom section of the car? Let's find that on our sketch. So I'm looking, that's right here. Uh, 
Okay, so it's right about here. This is, oh, I don't know if I transferred that one. It's going to be right here. So this line right here is going to be what we see as like the top and the bottom of this bottom section. This line right here is the roof of the car. Now, most cars are not rectangular from the front. They actually slant inward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to experiment with making this a little bit more of an angle here. So this is the line in between that hood of the car right here. And try to get this, like a ruler can be helpful. And the way to check this would be to say this distance has to be the same on this side if it goes to this corner. So let me just try that out. It's just about three quarters of an inch. About three quarters of an inch, so I'm good. And this triangle should be the same size. All right. Now, we have the front of the car, but odds are it's not going to be this sharp rectangle. So let's look at our front of the car and see what details. We have to add the front lights. We have the measurements for those and they go in between these lines right here. So I'm just going to draw some ovals in for now. Uh, I think right here. I'll just do one side first and then we'll do the second part. All right. Now the other thing is if you're sitting inside of a car you've probably noticed that the windshield is kind of curved around the front, right? You're sitting there and it, it doesn't like, it's just not a flat piece of glass, right? So the way that we would see that is we would see this curve that comes down here. Maybe a little bit lower. And the hood of the car might have a little bit more of a swoop to it, right? There might be kind of an arch in the middle. We know that our lights kind of come to the side here. And then we see what we call like the grill. So imagine like a hood ornament right about here. And for an off-road vehicle, it's usually pretty rectangular. And we're going to do horizontal vents here. It still looks pretty uh, sharp along the edges. So I'm going to round those things out. Okay, so I'm rounding up towards the top. I'm also going to add that beam here, right? That post that's separating it and holding up the rooftop. I'm just going to bulge it out a little bit around these headlights. But then don't forget about the fenders. Let's see which line that was. Fenders kind of go up to here. They're going to stick out slightly then curve back in so these are those things that pop out and cover the outside of those wheels so they don't splash mud on the side right and you're gonna notice though like if you look inside the car all right you're gonna see the dashboard kind of in between there maybe a little hump where the steering wheel is gonna be and then a little bit of the steering wheel okay now it looks like this windshield kind of came down a little bit too low so I'm going to trim it off right about here and lighten up some of that I will admit this seems a little bit like I don't know let's see what it looks like with the wheels now wheels from the front are just going to look like rectangles, flat on the bottom. And they usually line up with the outside of that fender, right? Um, but what you should notice is, see how we have this little scoop that comes up all the way? We have a line for that. We're going to notice that, like, you're going to see that too. Maybe we see it come up in the back there, a little bit larger, and there's our 
side. It is a little weird that this thing just kind of looks a little bit different than I expected from the front. I'm going to make these a little bit more rectangular. I'm going to give it a stronger hood line. And I'm going to maybe make this grill a little bit more rectangular. We'll add some kind of hood ornament there. I don't know. But I want, wanted you guys to see this because transferring your measurements can really help you know what this thing's going to look like. Now the front view, we had all these boxes or a rack on top. And then we had a couple lights. So let's add a few. I'm starting off by the side so we can divide them a little bit more evenly. Then I have this luggage that's popping up in the back. All right, now one cool way, especially for off-road tires, I like this technique of drawing, is you can kind of just put in these little, they're not ovals, I'd say they're kind of like long U's. Right? So it starts off evenly spaced, and as they get down, I draw lines to show that it goes under. It's curving, right? But these are the points where you have a little bit of fun. If you look at some pictures of cars, you can really just almost put these things together in your mind. So... You might also see some seats in there. And we're kind of on our way. So I hope you guys are getting the hang of this. I just wanted to show you that if you wanted to ever transfer this into three dimensions, what's cool, I'm not going to go into it today, but if you watch those one or two point perspective videos, these drawings could really help you try to draw it in 3D even more, right? Because from the side view, if we just created a car out of thin air, we don't really know exactly what it looks like from the front. This can give us an impression of what it does look like, okay? And using those two pictures, I'll do it very quickly. But down here, I want you to picture a two point perspective drawing Here's vanishing point one and two, or A and B, let's just call it that. And it's a lot easier to draw some boxes with this. So this could be that lower box on the side. This could be the front. Okay, and we'll connect that and this. So this would be this lower box would be the same thing as this box we drew in the beginning. And then we have that second box up here. We could draw that very easy right there. And then you're kind of on your way. I want you to see this shape. Picture this shape, if I drew these details on the side of that, I could do this on my own, right? If I picture these sides, this rectangle is the same thing as this rectangle here. And I could just more easily draw that on there and imagine it that way, okay? There are a lot of advanced tricks, and I want to actually, at the end of this video, if you're really interested in this topic, I found this like two-hour drawing documentary from an actual car designer and I put it in the playlist called concept cars or something like that this video will be in there I also have another video where I actually create a little paperweight um, using clay of the concept car that you draw out it's a really fun way to just actually participate in taking this from completely you know a blank piece of paper 
into reality with an actual model. And I have a really simple, like straightforward technique. So if you have some Sculpey clay or model magic or even ceramic clay, it's a really great uh, exercise if you're willing to take the drawing that you made today and turn it into an actual physical car, right? Because believe it or not, um, when it, before all these complicated machines came out, every car that it was made had to be sculpted by artists out of clay before they'd ever manufacture it and sell it to people. So they'd have a full-size car made completely out of clay that these artisans would just smooth out day by day. So like I said, there's a rich history. If you're interested in this stuff, it's a great way to go. I'm going to jump into drawing a few cars that we had requested. I don't know if I'll be able to do a ton of detail in them, but I'll get, get you guys started if you're interested. Let me pull them up here. Uh, I know that we had one request for... Uh, what do we got here? Let's see. We had a request for a Lamborghini and for... Batmobile and I found this really cool picture of the Batmobile but I'll start with this Lamborghini all right so I'm not exactly sure what this is called this is kind of the first one that came up but let's take a look at some strategies for drawing something like this if you're inspired by one first off look at that smooth arch on the top so I'm just gonna try to use my elbow getting a nice smooth arch it's nice and low Okay, look at the top part. There's an angle at the bottom over here. Or, sorry, on the back wheel. Kind of shoots from the front wheel over here. And it has this cool angle downward at the front. Okay, and it's nice and long in the back. Okay, it has that kind of scooped back end. And those wheels are placed pretty far apart. One back here. And it's nice and low to the ground so we almost got this shape already but look at this really cool scoop in front of that back wheel it's got an angle that goes forward really shows some speed All right and then there's another scoop down in here a couple angles look at how little my hand muscles are moving it's all coming from my elbow all right and you see some details down here. You can see there's like a separation, right? This is like the top of this scoop before it goes into the back. And let's draw in those wheels a little bit more. Look at how high the wheels go. They almost cut off the front of the car, right? And we see this really cool line goes almost like the fender right and that's the whole window it's like a teardrop shape or like a blade so it's a continuous looks like a continuous window the door probably comes in right about there but you don't really see it this is pretty straight at the front and it keeps pretty flat at the top and we see all of these unique details in the fins but they all have these downward angles right here. In the back, we have a curve that on the back side of this fender, do you notice how like, so these bottom fins here, I'm just gonna darken this up because it's in shadow in this picture. And then there's a curve here. And even the top part of this fender, which starts over here, it basically turns the corner in line with this stuff. So finding continuous lines and ways to make those things link up like we did before in that first one is a really awesome way to just get really good looking cars. Okay. I'm going to trim down this thing a little bit more. If you spend a lot of time looking at these supercars, they have some really out there proportions. They look nothing like, you know, your four-door sedan. And those wheels, I'm just going to darken, I'm going to shade them in for now. I'm not going to do too much of the details. You could probably spend a whole lesson just on rims. Maybe that's a topic for another day. I'm going to darken this in. 
But I'm using some shading lines that go with the curves just to make it a little bit nicer. And then when I go in and punch up these lines, I got these nice little like fins in the back. Drawing quickly but loosely. Right, you can see that you can slightly see the front of this car, but this thing is literally looks like a blade, this window in here. So you can see that we covered all these ideas, right? And the proportion isn't perfect, but we're getting a sense that we could use these ideas on our own for our own cars. Look at all the shading that I'm doing. It's from my elbow. Nice, quick, loose, but fast strokes. If you're drawing fast things, draw fast. There's always time to go back in and clean it up. So for example, if I want to show in between here that there's a like kind of like a window, I go in with my eraser tool. All right. There's a Lamborghini. I think that was Sean who requested that. Hopefully that got you started on here. But again, you can these are really works of art. A lot of these cars are hand built. All right. Let's look at uh, what the next one was is a sorry, I'm having trouble with my mouse here. Oh, this is the Batmobile. I found this really cool drawing that you'll like. Kind of relates to what we did. Okay, it's a little hard to see, um, but this is more of like a typical design drawing. But you can see the lines that are. I'm gonna put it down here so you can see my face. You can see some of the lines that were drawn. Those nice sweeping curves. We'll do a quick sketch of this one. I'm gonna try out using my pen. Uh, the Bic pen, you can certainly use your pencil. I'm going to draw lightly and quickly. All right, so I'm drawing my baseline nice and light. And I'm going to try to get that front curve just lightly here. And then I see that there's a sweeping bat curve right over here, and it kind of rounds off towards the end kind of swoops back in and there's this really nice curve that leads in. It's almost like a wedge with a rounded back. Now the top of this thing almost has a weird scooped look to it. So there's a lot of nice S curves in there. Again drawing from my elbow nice and smooth and I'm basically ghosting all this stuff in. Just like at the beginning I don't know which one I'm gonna go with. I'm just creating kind of a smoky, dreamy idea. Give myself some flexibility. I angle this down in the front. Give it a little bit of a bumper there. And those wheels almost go all the way up to the top. Now this car almost like rests on the ground. There's hardly any clearance, right? But notice how I still already have this line that pops up. It's like a wedge, it goes all the way into the corner. And that wheel sits right back in here. It's nice and big. It's a true like hot rod. Now for the wing itself, I see these as kind of just these rounded edges. Okay, and then I can put some points in or parentheses. You know, scoop those in. This is a concept car, so we're just getting the rhythm and vibe of these cars that we draw it's not about details at this point we're just like throwing ideas around there's like a big engine up here that you could probably see you know a concept car is something that we as designers use or a concept sketch is something before the thing is made just to decide if it's something we even want to make So I'm putting these scoops in front of that wheel. I think I made it a little bit too close, but good enough for quarantine work here. There's probably all sorts of little jazz down here. Probably put a bunch of like weapons in here. 
And if you know more about the Batmobile, again, I'd love to see your rendition. But as you know, like this would be a more classic one. I don't know what version it's from. But as you probably know, there's been so many different versions or reinterpretations that play with the themes in these cars that you could come up with your own. Maybe you'll be the one who, when they reboot the Batman franchise in, you know, 10 years, you can be the one who designed it. I don't know if this, like, comes over. It's kind of not the best drawing to be looking at, but as you can see, we're starting to get the feeling for this car. But I want to point this out. This was all done with a pen, and if you're not used to that, one really great thing about drawing with a pen is that you have to have this mentality of like okay i can't erase so i have to go forward in a bold movement okay a lot of artists are so afraid of making a mistake that they hold themselves back artists job is to be bold all right you have to go for it sometimes it's gonna mean you're gonna mess mess up but you have to be ready to like make those mistakes and not take it as an insult or as a devastating loss. It's literally a piece of paper that you can throw away. But once you get to the point where you're not even like mad at yourself for messing up and you just like, okay, you just move on to the next one, that's when you're gonna grow quicker. Cut yourself 100% slack. As long as you're drawing, you're doing more than other people who've been dreaming of being an artist but won't draw. If you just draw and draw and draw and don't think bad about it and enjoy the process you're going to get a thousand times better than anybody else who's like still obsessed over making mistakes all right so i kind of established that feel but look at how similar it is to that first car we drew oh, wrong one okay i just want to show you that see this scoop in the back that goes over the rear wheel that rear part is higher same thing over here that wedge movement there's kind of some themes and as you look at cards you'll be able to get a better feeling of where those lines should go which one should i pick all right so we're comparing those two and they're pretty similar right that same kind of curved look the fender okay and the last one i'm going to do today we're a little bit over an hour here but since i'm kind of hanging out and in a good vibe here anyone has has anyone seen that um uh new movie Ford versus Ferrari. I really enjoyed that, especially the sound. It was just incredible. And I'll be honest, I'm not like a huge car nut. Like I, you know, especially this uh, Ford GT, what is it, 40? I, ca I can't even remember the name of the car, but the thing is, <laughs> these things were insanely powerful and they have such a classic look to them. You know, even today, people who are obsessed with cars, like you know, it's one thing if you're into the supercars like Lamborghinis, but there's something about the classic looks of some of these cars that are just mind-blowing. Hey, Jim, thanks for stopping by. I'm really happy that you were able to catch this one today. If you do a drawing, please send it my way. Or, uh, yeah, I'll have to set up an email account if you don't use Instagram. But if you haven't already, please, I'd love to see any of your results or if you have ideas for next time. Thanks, Jim. Uh, and let's just do a quick one here. This will be kind of my selfish one because I really enjoy uh, the look of this car here all right so same thing nice and low car and i'm just going to draw that baseline there's the ground here's the baseline and i'm just going to try to get the curves now this one i see more of an angle over here coming up from the back and i'm just going to lightly draw in some of those curves feels like this line if we continued that uh windshield down or almost go down to the ground like a little bit behind where the front of the wheel is i'm just going to slice in a wheel here and this is similar that wheel almost goes all the way up to the hood of the car okay again this is nice and smoky that angle at the front is almost parallel with the windshield i don't know if you see that and instead of going all the way to the ground it kind of slices off right here we get this nice little scoop in there maybe an air intake or something like that maybe to cool off those brakes if you haven't seen that movie i highly recommend it even if you're not into like racing it's just really good i like christian bale in that movie he's really good 
I got this nice low to the ground race car here. That back wheel certainly goes a little bit higher too. We'll draw that one. You know, I'm focusing on getting it on the same level as that front wheel. Remember, we're drawing from the elbow, the shoulder, keeping things loose. Okay, and I see those intakes. So if you're not familiar with how an engine works, the engine needs air to combine with the gasoline. And so the intakes, these little tubes, it almost looks like a jet engine, right? It They pull the air into the engine, and that's what causes that explosive force to get this thing going. So looking for intakes, like along the side there, that can be a really cool way to make the car look really sporty. Got a line here. There's that iconic circle, and the number one. Let's just pop that in. For this one, the window is actually pretty small. A lot of these race cars, especially if you watch that movie, you'll realize like these things must not have been that comfortable to drive in. And it's not like they had leather seats. Since they're so low to the ground, if you hit a bump, it would probably like <laughs> break your tailbone. But nonetheless, to be going that fast would be pretty incredible. All right. What are you guys thinking? I think we got this down. I'm going to try to add this inner circle for the rim. Pretty fat tires there. We'll add that little kind of tri... I don't know what that is. Trifecta looking thing. If you're going to be drawing perfect circles, I recommend like tracing something. Like if you get the top of like a, a bottle or something, just kind of collect a few of those. Or if you want to buy a stencil, you know, that uh, a drafts person might use. And then, you know, go in, strengthen up some of those lines that you've made. Doesn't have to be perfect. And obviously color is a great way to uh, spice these things up. But that's going to put us a little bit uh, over an hour here. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And uh, I would be really eager to see any of your designs. But by practicing those loose drawing techniques, you can use that in any technique. Uh, Joe uh, Smith, um, is that Arthur, Roberta maybe? What are we going to do in the next class? Honestly, <laughs> let me know. I don't know. I... I've been having trouble thinking and deciding. I have so much stuff to give you guys. If you have an idea, do you have one? Please comment today. Or if you think of one later, comment like on one of the videos. Um, you know, feel free to check out some of the other videos on my site. Anytime you guys make a comment, um, I can see that. And then um, I love getting suggestions for our next lesson. Uh, yeah, so for those of you who joined us for the first time again this has been our daily draw along i've been covering different topics every day we could do like multiple day projects i was thinking about like learning how to make a portrait uh i could do some cartooning uh so if you haven't already instagram look follow me on instagram and um make comments on the uh, posts and i'd love to hear more about them because i want you guys to get uh some stuff uh, joe is saying trees or nature that would be kind of cool. Maybe drawing, um, oh, dragons. That actually would be cool. We haven't done any like characters or, you know, sci-fi or fantasy stuff. That would actually be really cool. Thank you. Dragons would be really fun. So again, like I said, I'm going to head out now, but I, I really appreciate you guys tuning in today. And if you know anyone who's an aspiring artist that would enjoy this channel or has an idea for me, send them my way and be sure to tell them to like and subscribe. Um, and I will be with you guys tomorrow at 3.30. Thanks again for tuning in. And uh, yeah, it looks like we're getting a lot of requests for dragons and trees. Okay, so <laughs> I'll start putting some uh, ideas together and get ready for that lesson. So thanks again, guys. Really appreciate you tuning in. And I'll see you next time on Art with Anderson. See you tomorrow.